Hey there, Tommy from The Run Testers, and in this video I'm going to be doing a first run review of the ASICS Super Blast, a shoe I've been wanting to get hold of for quite a while. Now I was sent these by Sports Shoes to review, uh, we don't get paid by Sports Shoes to do this, uh, so all the views in this video are my own, but thanks to Sports Shoes for sending these over so that we could actually do a video about them. Right, let's jump in and see how that first run went. The A6 Super Blast costs £210 or $220. It weighs in at 248 grams or 8.8 .8 ounces for men in a size 8. The drop is 8 millimeters and the stack is 45.5 millimeters at the back and 37.5 millimeters at the front. The Super Blast is a daily training shoe that veers towards faster and longer efforts. The midsole combines FF Blast Plus, the same foam used in the Nova Blast 3 and Magic Speed 2, and FF Blast Turbo, ASIC speed focus cushioning used in the Meta Speed Sky Plus. That mix of materials aims to deliver a cushioned and responsive ride across a range of training sessions. The shoe features a thin asymmetric mesh upper for breathability and comfort, a heel stabilizer for a secure ride, and an AHA Plus outsole rubber for grip. There's also a trampoline-inspired outsole design for a more responsive bounce. So first of all, the fit for me in the ASIC Super Blast is a tricky one. I'd definitely say size down half a size, but keep in mind that it's quite a tight shoe around the midfoot, um, so it's, it's pretty snug. So if you're sizing down half a size, you're probably gonna end up getting a little bit tighter in that midfoot, so it's worth taking that in consideration. I didn't have any problems running in this shoe, so I probably would stick true to size for me based on that that tight uh, midfoot, um, and I didn't have any issues with the extra space at the front, but yeah, it's a slightly long shoe. <laughs> So the Super Blast is a shoe that we've known about for a while, uh, but to be honest, I didn't know really what the shoe was designed to do and where it sat in the ASICS uh, selection of shoes. And it's quite an interesting one to try out. Obviously, it has links to the Nova Blast, um, but in fact, it's a shoe that's more designed uh, for faster training sessions like tempo sessions where you're going to be running at a consistent pace and you want something that's got a bit of bounce and a bit of comfort whereas the Nova Blast is more designed for daily training runs veering probably more towards the cushion side of things to the speedy uh, side of daily training. So the Super Blast aims to sit between that and maybe the ASICS Metaspeed Sky Plus as the uh, faster training shoe if you're going to go out and do your marathon training if you want to do long distance training um, and you want something that is gonna give you a bit of bounce, a bit of propulsion, and just give you the ability to, to run a bit faster. Um, it does feel very different than the ASICS Nova Blast because it has, uh, instead of the FF Blast that's in the Nova Blast, it has one layer of midsole foam, which is this FF Turbo uh, midsole foam, which is what you get in the ASICS Metaspeed Sky Plus. Uh, and it also has this like, smaller layer, this quite thin layer at the bottom of uh, FF Blast Plus midsole foam, which is that, the, the daily uh, foam used in the Nova Blast. So it's an interesting combination of foams and not many shoes have this dual layer in them. Uh, the Mac 5 does it really well uh, and it, that sort of dual layer midsole actually delivers a quite a nice experience. Um, in the Super Blast, it is quite noticeable that it's a different foam than what you'll get in the Nova Blast. And it doesn't particularly feel that much like the A6 Meta Speed Sky Plus either. Um, it does feel quite bouncy. When you first put these shoes on, it feels a little bit, it, it, like, like you, it really bounces you along as you're, you're running in it. Um, and it also feels, I wouldn't say firm, but it feels like it's quite compact. So when you're running in it, it really does compress nicely and give you a nice bit of energy return off the back of it. So I really enjoyed that first run in it because of that foam, it's, it seems to work really well. And the run that I did was a bit of a combination of things. So I did uh, 11K in total, and that was a combination of a couple of K running at fast pace, some really slow stuff to see how it delivered um, at the slower pace, and then some of my average running pace, which is around um, four, four fifty minute kilometers. And what I found over the course of that run and those different speeds is that when you pick up the pace and you have a consistent uh, speed that you're running at, which is probably more targeted towards that that tempo speed where you want to maintain a consistent pace, you're not sprinting, 
um, but you want to run quickly for a longer period. Um, that's where it really came into its own. It felt great at that pace. It really felt like it was propelling me forward. The landing was really nice and I could just maintain a lovely, consistent, fluid pace that just, and the shoe just felt like it was helping me do that all the way. When I slowed it down to my normal pace, it still felt fine, not a problem at all. In fact, what felt quite comfortable, um, but definitely didn't think it was, it, it was a fantastic um, easy run shoe for me or a, a sort of average run shoe um, but it still did feel good so tick the boxes for that as well at the, at the slower pace that I ran I didn't really get anything from this shoe it actually felt like it was kind of um, counterproductive to me it felt quite uh, it felt like it was trying to do something and it couldn't do it so you're sort of hitting the ground and it's it's not really serving any purpose there's not a nice comfortable sinking feeling as you're running along like something like the uh, New Balance More V4 where that just really cushions the feet comfortably and just lets you ride along it just didn't feel like it was meant to be doing that so I think it's definitely a shoe that, that veers more towards that tempo speed uh, a shoe that is designed to work in um, combination with something like the A6 Metaspeed Sky Plus as a training partner uh, without a carbon plate. Um, but overall, I really did enjoy that that run. I thought I I, I think it's uh, an interesting shoe. And I remember when I first tried the original Nova Blast, I got a similar feeling um, of nice bit of bounce, nice bit of cushioning and comfort. Uh, and it just really helped me run a bit faster, surprisingly, uh, in the Nova Blast 1. The Nova Blast 2 and 3, they've sort of changed the, the foam in it and they've made it a bit wider and it sort of loses that bounce and that enjoyment and that energy return that you get. The Super Blast does have that, so it's definitely uh, an interesting change from the Nova Blast and it's probably the biggest difference between those two shoes. They do feel very different to run in. I was running on the seafront, so it was quite wet uh, and I didn't have any problems at all with the grip on this, on that run. It's got a fair bit of outside rubber on it, not loads, but it seemed fine for me on that run, so no uh, slipping or anything like that. The only thing I would say about this shoe, which is a bit uh, not too sure about, is the upper. So the upper's got this sort of lightweight jacket mesh material, but it's quite rigid. It feels it feels like um, sort of plasticky uh, waterproof material, which I didn't have any problems with, but it just doesn't feel as comfortable as some of the other um, uppers that you get on shoes, including the Nova Blast. It's just a little bit um, rigid, uh, and I suppose more like a race shoe. Um, but if you're using this as a sort of daily trainer, I don't think the upper is going to be that that comfortable. But it's fine. It's just it's for, for a shoe that costs this much. Um, not a big fan of the upper on it. The only other thing to mention about the Super Blast is that it's a tricky shoe to class within the ASICS range. So the Magic Speed 2 is also designed as a training partner to uh, ASICS faster shoes like the ASICS Meta Speed Sky Plus. Uh, so comparisons with that are a bit of a tricky one to do. I haven't tested the Magic Speed 2, so I'm not sure how it compares to that shoe, but it's a bit difficult to work out where this shoe fits into the range because you've got those two options to look for if you want a training partner for your race shoe. Okay, so my verdict on the A6 Super Blast so far is I really like it. I think it's a nice shoe for running faster in. I think as a daily trainer, it veers more towards those those faster runs. Don't think you're gonna use it for any slower runs. It just doesn't really do it. It doesn't feel right. Um, but it, it, I did like that energy propulsion. I did feel like I could run, run faster in it, and I do want to go a lot further in this shoe. I think it'd be a great marathon training shoe. Might even try and do uh, a long race in it, a half marathon, maybe even a marathon, and see and see what that, that's like. But what I would say uh, about this shoe, and it's a problem that we're seeing in a lot of shoes uh, in recent months, is that it's very expensive. It's two hundred and ten pounds for what is essentially a fast training shoe, uh, and when you're looking at shoes around that price mark there's a lot of carbon plate top level racing shoes that are coming in around that price so to have a training shoe that costs that much is it's a lot of money it's a lot of money if it's, if it's intended purposes specifically for tempo training uh, and doesn't really deliver in any other way um so i think when it comes down to it looking if you want to buy that shoe that's a big factor um i definitely for 210 pounds it's probably too expensive for what it is other shoes that you would compare with this are probably something like the New Balance um, Speed Comp Trainer. Now that shoe is, I don't really like that shoe anywhere near as much as this actually. It's a fairly limited shoe. It's not as good for long distance runs um, as I feel this shoe would be based on the feel of it. Um, and it's that, that's, that started at a similar price as well, um, but that has gone down massively across most uh, stores in the UK. So I think it came around 200 and something pounds, but now you can get it for just over 100. So 
I would say that this is a superior shoe to a super comp trainer if you're using it as a marathon training shoe or a training partner to a, uh, a race shoe. Um, another shoe that you probably would add to that list is the Saucony Endorphin Speed 3 or 2. Um, now, that's another shoe that is skews towards faster training, skews towards even racing. People, I know people that race in that shoe. Um, but also, it's it's a little bit more versatile than that. A lot of people use that shoe for just as their only shoe when they do all of their training in it. You can run quite comfortably in that shoe at a slower pace. You can do all your daily training in it, and you can also race in it. I just don't think this shoe has the versatility of that. And the Saucony Endorphin Speed 3 is considerably cheaper. So um, if you're looking for a shoe that can you can run fast in, um, but... Uh, you don't want to spend £210, that's probably a better option. And it's been out for a while now, and the Speed 2 has been out for a very long time. You can get it considerably cheaper. That shoe does have a plate in it, so it's a little bit more rigid when you're running in it. Um, it doesn't quite have um, the uh, feel of this shoe, but this is also quite a rigid shoe as well. So it's not far off a shoe that, that's got a plate in it. Um, so it's, there's not a big difference in those shoes, but the price really is a big factor for me. £210 is a lot of money for a shoe if you're buying the A6 Metaspeed Sky Plus as well, and maybe the A6 Nova Blast as your daily trainer and, and long run trainer. So that's a lot of money uh, to spend on shoes, and, and £210 is just a bit too much. Okay, that's it from me on that first run on the A6 Super Blast. Uh, Nick's also going to be joining me in the multi test review once we've managed to get quite a few more miles in this. I'm really looking forward to seeing what his thoughts are on that. Um, but apart from that, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click the little bell icon and check the channel out for all the other videos we've got. And if you click into the caption below, you can find a link to our podcast, um, which we do at the end of each month and talk about various things from guides for beginner runners to the latest. Uh, kit that's out and plenty of other stuff that we decided to talk about. Thanks a lot for watching. Catch you next time.